You know, I think it says something when I had to stop playing with this rifle at the last game and instead play with this rifle because this rifle seemed to be more accurate. This, this is the Stormtrooper gun. So if you hadn't guessed from the intro, I think it's about time that we tear this rifle down and start doing some upgrades to improve the performance of it. Now, if uh, you haven't already seen the first part of this series, I highly recommend checking it out. The link should be appearing up here, where we go over what this project is all about, and then also have a look at this, the stock rifle we're using, the Simon CM706. And on a note of admin, if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and dropping, dropping a like and a comment down below. It really does help out. All right, that's enough shilling. Let's, uh, let's get on with the actual video. So, this week, I'm going to look at doing free upgrades to it. What do I mean by free upgrades? Well, in my book, a free upgrade means we're not going to use any new parts and only use consumables and a bit of time and elbow grease to try and improve the performance of the rifle. So in this video, all the internals are still going to be the stock internals. We're only going to try and tweak them slightly to improve the performance. Now, what are we going to use today? Well, in terms of consumables, we're going to use three things, silicon grease, electrical tape and Teflon tape. Also, it would be really handy to have some white spirit to hand or other cleaning alcohols to just help in the process of cleaning up the parts to put new uh, grease on them. Now odds are, if you've done teching before, you probably have some or all of these to hand. If you don't, don't worry, these are very readily available and fairly low cost to pick up. Now I'm not going to be counting the cost of these items towards the build cost because I see these as consumables and stuff I already have in stock. However, if you are, you're only looking at around £10 to buy in all of this stuff to help with the project. And the best bit is, we're only going to be using a tiny amount of all of them, so you'll have left over for other projects at a later date. Right, with that out of the way, let's dive on in and get on with what we're going to do. Right, so now that I've got it broken down into the parts we want to focus on, I can now go over my kind of plan. So, step one is get the air seal in the cylinder up and make sure that this gives us a good compression. Step two is get the air seal up on the hop chamber and make sure that we're not getting air leaks there. And then step three is stabilizing the inner barrel in the outer barrel to make sure that when the shot is fired, this barrel doesn't wobble about because obviously that is gonna add inaccuracies. So I guess there's no real, real way to do this other than crack on with it. So let's start off by trying to improve the air seal in the cylinder. As we can see here, the stock air seal is all right, but not perfect. We can hear that the piston is slowly slipping forwards in there and if we wait 10 to 15 seconds and release our finger there is no spring tension left and the piston has already come all the way forwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our needle nose pliers and take the cylinder head off. We're going to take out the internals and we're going to give it all a good clean down and try and remove the current grease uh, on the piston and on the cylinder. Once the parts are nice and clean we can then get a bit of silicon grease and rub it into the o-ring on the piston head and for good measure let's put some on the glide rings as well that are down the length of the piston. We're looking for a fairly thin and even layer of grease all around the piston but not too much because if we put an excess in all that's going to happen is that's going to be blown down the barrel and degrade our accuracy. Once our piston is nice and greased we can move on to the cylinder head. Again there's an o-ring on that so we're going to clean that off and then we're going to look to re-grease it. Again looking to use a nice coating but not a too heavy coating because any excess grease will eventually work its way down into the barrel. Once that's done we're going to use a bit of Teflon tape wrapped around the uh, threads to help add a bit of extra seal to it. Now I know what people are going to say and oh, you should never use uh, Teflon tape in your cylinder this tech told me not to. Well not really in AEGs but in, uh, in spring rifles where they're actually threaded on cylinder heads, it kind of makes sense because Teflon tape is used to help seal leaks on threads. So our aim with this Teflon tape placement is to not cover the O-ring and also not have too much in the cylinder area where it could block the nozzle. And our newly Teflon taped and greased cylinder head can be put back on and tightened down. Now let's check to see if our modifications have made any improvements. So once again, we're going to put the cylinder into the receiver and cock it and do the cover nozzle test. 
So, sealed the end, pulled the trigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'd call that a pretty good air seal now. So now that's out of the way, let's move on to the hop and barrel assembly. First things first, let's tear it all down and give the barrel a good clean. Once that's nice and clean to a satisfactory standard, now comes the time of trying to improve the air seal. First things first, I'm going to use a bit of silicon grease on the barrel underneath where the hop rubber would normally sit. Now, the important thing here is to make sure we don't go too close to the hop window because then silicon grease could end up in the barrel and degrade our accuracy. So I do it on the undersides and in front of the hop window. Once that's done, we can reinstall the hop-up bucking onto the barrel, but first of all, make sure the hop-up bucking doesn't have any damage to it, which this one does not. And then we're going to wrap it all in Teflon tape to try and improve the air seal. Now, I believe that this air seal was improved two ways. One, it helps seal the air in a bit because it's obviously wrapped up, so there's a less easy path to go down. Obviously, the pressure will still blow it out, uh, so this isn't 100% an air seal. But the other way in which it improves the air seal is it increases the diameter of the hop-up rubber assembly and therefore puts it more in contact with the hop-up chamber, which in turn puts pressure back onto it and hopefully will hold the hop-up rubber so it deforms less as the air pushes through it and therefore gives us a better air seal. So once that's all Teflon taped up, we can reinstall the barrel and hop rubber into the hop-up chamber and torque it all down. So the final part of this free upgrade process is going to look at stabilising the inner barrel in the outer barrel. And that is where our electrical tape comes in. So you would think that if you just stabilise it at the muzzle end, then everything should be fine as the barrel is pretty much held in place by the hop chamber. But if you think about it from a harmonic standpoint, that's probably not going to do too much because the barrel itself can vibrate under the, the air pressure and BB travel going down it. So I think we should stabilize it in three different places to try and dampen it down a bit and make sure that the harmonics shouldn't affect the barrel too much. So to do this, we're gonna tape just in front of the hop chamber. We're gonna tape halfway down the barrel and then we're gonna tape just behind the muzzle. So we've got three points of contact and hopefully dampen down the barrel a bit. So what I try to do is start the tape from the bottom of the barrel and finish the tape at the bottom of the barrel. That means that we have equal number of layers all the way around the barrel, therefore it should sit pretty central in the outer barrel. So once we've done enough, what we think is enough layers, let's cut the tape and try and fit it in. If it's too hard to fit in, that means it's too thick, so we're gonna to have to take layers of tape off. And if it easily slides in, that probably means it's too thin, so we're gonna to have to add more layers of tape. And we're gonna keep doing this until the barrel can just be pushed in but it doesn't have too much resistance and doesn't just slide in. That means that we've got a good amount of contact with the outer barrel and should help stabilize it. So with all of those done, let's put the rifle back together and see how it performs. Right, so once the rifle was back together, I took it out to the range to do some testing and then brought it back here once the hop was all set and put it through the chrono. So let's have a look and see if our mods have made any difference to the FPS output of the rifle. So just for a reminder, the stock rifle, once set for point fours was chronoing in at an average of 1.78 joules over 10 shots with a variance of 0.17 joules, which is about 9.5%. Now, drum roll please, after our upgrades, it is now producing, on average, 1.88 joules with a 0.15 variance, which means that we've actually upped the uh, joule output by about 0.1 joules. Bear in mind, we haven't changed any parts, it's just the mods we've done. We've only really improved our dual stability by about 2%, come down from around 10% to around 7.5%, 2.5%, which is a bit disappointing for me actually. Um, I thought I was going to stabilise it a bit more. Now, the cause of this variance really can only come down to one area, and that is the hop chamber, because we know now that our cylinder is fully sealing, which means there's no air link in that, so the air leak has to be basically in the hop rubber. In my eyes, there are two causes for that. One, and probably the most likely, I haven't seal sealed it well enough. Or two, uh, the hop rubber is just not up to scratch and will not produce a good air seal no matter what we do. Um, which means we probably need to replace the hop up rubber. 
and I have a replacement hop-up rubber here. And guess what? It doesn't fit. Yes, Sima, in their infinite wisdom, have used a non-standard Type 96 barrel in their rifle, i.e. their barrel is not compatible with other Type 96 barrels. And in fact, when you look at it, the locking slot is on the bottom of the barrel, like an AEG barrel, not the top of the barrel, like the barrels found in the well L96s. And I know exactly why they've done it, because Sima make AEGs, and it makes sense to just standardize their barrels to be like AEG barrels even though this barrel doesn't have AEG locking lugs on it and has extra cuts for the Type 96 locking system. Um, however, apart from that, it looks identical and is the same length and has the same barrel cuts and same crown cuts as the barrel in my Sima M16. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? So that means if I want to do any upgrades to the barrel and hop up, I'm going to have to replace the barrel and the hop up. And uh, just as a tease for a future video, for in fact, probably the next video in this series, I have here a ZCI type bore. You can just about see the color on the end there. The camera's probably not going to focus, but just about see, I have a Maple Leaf MR hop on that. And I thought, seeing as that hop up chamber isn't actually compatible with AEG barrels, got an action army chamber to put in it so stay tuned and we'll see how replacing the hop hop up chamber and barrel affects the performance of the rifle right that's enough of me babbling on here in the office let's hand over to previous me editing ben here um just jumping in straight away uh we're going to split this video into two parts uh first of all is this video you're watching right now this is going to be the teching video showing you what, what i've done to the rifle uh, and then tomorrow we'll release the range test video showing you what the uh what the upgrades have done to the performance of the rifle. Fortunately, this was going to be one video, but I felt, well, more the producer here, Data, felt that that was going to make the video too long. So we might as well split it up and you get an extra video for the week. If you're still watching, thank you very much for still being here. And if you're interested in the testing and you're not already, subscribe and hit the notification button because the video will be going live tomorrow and you'll get notified as soon as it's ready to watch. Till then, ciao.